Sam Onella. He's back. He's back. And YouTube seems to be, um, ooh, I got to knock on wood on this one, giving us a freaking break. Yeah, you and should And not, not bashing us for everything that we post. We've tried to post <laughs> Sam Onella Academy videos uh, in the past where we reacted to them, and it did not work out um, until yesterday. So yesterday we posted a video. We took a chance. We took a chance just to see if it would work. And it did. And people were like, hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey. Sam O'Neill is back after three years. Yeah. You should go check out his newest video because mm -hmm. it's animal related also. And you know us. We love animals. So yes. we're here to do that. Yeah. We're going to react to a Sam O'Neill Academy video for you guys. Mm -hmm. And we hope you enjoy it. It's called Where Animals Scientific Names Come From. Who knows what this is going to be. Oh, it's probably a bunch of damn colonizers just whipping out their names for whatever for various reasons that make no sense but maybe not who's to say sam Onella. okay let's get to it let's do it <laughs> Hey kids, I just woke up from a nap I took in January of 2020 and boy are my arms <laughs> tired. Let's see what I missed. Hmm. Queen's dead, war in Ukraine, the Taliban's back. What? What is... Holy shit. They made a movie called Scoob. Unprecedented global pandemic, Space Jam 2, some popular guy named Brandon. Yep, that just about covers it. Anyway, oh we all know God. about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever wonder what they actually mean? To find out, we must look to taxonomists. They're the guys responsible for the systems of <laughs> nomenclature we use to classify organisms. And boy, are they convoluted. First, you got the big eight. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I've seen plenty of mnemonic devices for this, but since the D just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fairground staff. Dumb kids pushing cups over feeds growing spite. Donkey Kong's <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking <laughs> g serendipitously. The way wow. this whole thing works differs slightly depending on which kingdom you pick. So today we'll be sticking to the animal one, cause that one's the coolest and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary. They basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. The one exception is species, which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks. Mule, liger, zedonk, skunk ape. They can live fulfilling <laughs> lives, but they're all shooting blanks, so they don't count. On the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things like Chidane Danes, which actually work, so Ch dogs, no. dogs are dogs. Besides no. species, though, no. it's the Wild West in here. Plenty of times, Please, eight no. tiers isn't even enough for scientists, so they just stick new sub-levels in between. Legions, cohorts, tribes, series, divisions, and if you want to keep going, you can throw all kinds of prefixes on any of these for even more layers. There's even subspecies, which the more pedantic of you may think to yourselves that creating names for subspecies at all kind of undermines the single somewhat agreed-upon definition in the whole tree. To that, my friends, taxonomists say, uh -huh. but while that's pretty complex, the actual names themselves are pretty easy to wrap your head around. Though taxonomists may hide behind their fancy Greek and Latin, the Vulgate is no substitute for wit. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species, and most of them can be split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a lion, I'm calling it Leo. Done. Tiger, it's a tigris. Cat, it's a caddis. Easy. Multi-word names can be translated the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila chrysaetos. Gold mm. eagle eagle. They decided to be a show off and do eagle in Greek and Latin. Essentially the same though. But if a species is too specific or exotic for a one to one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration comes from just giving the creature the old once over and pointing out some cool looking body part. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in the name. For example, Homeboy took one look at this thing and said, Yup. Red triangle slug. I'm going on break. <laughs> we call this thing a fucking unicorn, almost like that means one horn or something. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'm gonna call them head foot. And now biologists <laughs> everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Matter of fact, if it's got feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. You got four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, two feet, equal feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big feet, slow feet, or feet, both feet, joint feet, no feet, ten thousand feet. 
feet, cow's feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't look that interesting, another thing to point out is where you found it. This could be a territory like American bear or Siamese crocodile, or just a habitat like woods macaque or toilet rat. <laughs> woods more, macaque. We need to look at the men behind the magic and what drives and motivates them. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better way to go down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you found. But not all fields have the same <laughs> volume of things to scribble the old John Hancock over. On the one end, you got physicists just making up their own slightly different form of ionizing radiation measurement. And even then, only the top dogs got away with it. Now, zoology, any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say, this one has 13 spots, but the one in the book's only got 11. I will call him Splinkus's Ladybird. Alternatively, <laughs> plenty of biologists have given shout outs to their contemporaries, both other biologists and those across the academic gamut, from geologists to physicists to explorers and more. Naturally, Darwin's got a shitload, but even the background characters get immortalized one way or another. Who are Thompson, Grant, Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier? I don't know, but they've all got gazelles, so they must be pretty cool. Of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything except for one taxonomist being a fan of theirs. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named after them, but since all the big cute stuff was found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got Scaptia, Beyonce, -a. The only similarity I can gather here is Queen Bee, looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus jagarius, an old stone named after an old stone. In 2007, one Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Mermechia Fila Neil Youngie to honor his favorite <laughs> musician, which caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV TV and profess his utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert Report to announce the naming of apostatist Stephen Colbert. -y. So, if that gives any of you epic biologists out there any ideas, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Please, I would do anything. For the love of God, I'll even take a liking. The world of politics is by no means immune to this phenomenon. Obama alone has fucking nine, as do a load of other presidents. Trump's got a moth with funny hair, Bush has a fungus beetle, Reagan's a wasp, Carter's got a darter, and so forth. Even Austria's most famous painter got the oh, honor for this blind no. cave beetle. Mind you, it was 1933, painter. so you can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler actually wrote him a letter saying, oh, thank you, my little entomalo mensch, and then went on to do, you know, Hitler things. Fun fact, not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have, it's also now facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Guess old habits die hard. Oh, fictional characters have their fair share of species under their belt. On the topic of evil beetles, this one's named after Darth Vader because wow. he kind of looks like his helmet, I guess. <laughs> this was actually named by the same guy who did the bush one and belongs to the same genus. Hmm. There's also this mite <laughs> genus Darth Vaderum, which is a lot more accurate and frightening. In 2012, a single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen had his neck covered with hair and his lip <laughs> clenched into a pog and his endocrine system filled with Soy, and he said, it's just like the eye of Sauron. And then he started chewing on Funko Pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting G Fuel and shitting D20s everywhere until the prostate stimulation made him the God, genus dude. is now Sauroniops from Eye of Sauron. This spider was named after Godric Gryffindor because it looks like the sorting hat. SpongeBob I mean... has not a sponge, but a fungus. The legendary birds from Pokemon each have their own, you guessed it, beetle. And the list Hell goes yeah. on. <laughs> Scientists are nerds. Who knew? Anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic, there is some method to the madness. One rule is the principle of priority. This states that once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This has led to plenty of misnomers coined by whoever got their foot in the door first, particularly in the case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. Here's one. Red Panda? Nah. Shining Cat, coined in 1825. To be fair, they're actually about as close to cats as they are to actual pandas, so whatever. Hmm. Here's two. Capsicum chinense. Eaten there? Sure. Native? Only off by around half a globe, where literally all hot peppers came from. This principle holds true even if someone thinks they've found a new species, only to later discover that it was already named. For example, in 1824, one John Edward Gray documented the plain zebra, calling it Equus burchellii, or Birchell's horse, named after a renowned naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 1785, some other douche classified this character as the quagga. The last quagga died in a Dutch prison in 
in 1883. So, why do we care? Well, in the 2000s, scientists decided to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that, they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So technically, they're one species. And today, they're both called quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, huh. but then again, so does asinus, and oh. that worked out fine. Just to maintain the distinction, the extinct subspecies was renamed quagga quagga, so you know it's the real quagga. <laughs> this double naming convention has been done with a lot of subspecies, in fact. Wild wild horse, spotted spotted panther, or my favorite, gorilla gorilla gorilla. Just like, yeah, it's the gorillas gorilla that ever gorilled. Fuck you want from me. A closely related rule also states that the names of all taxa have to be unique. So if two people coincidentally name any taxa on the same thing, the older one gets to stay, and the new one gets the boot. Like, if you saw a genus called echidna, you'd think it was, you know, an echidna, right? Well, no, that'd make too much sense. For a while it was true, from 1797 to 1811, then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels echidna back in 1788, so the real echidna had to be changed to tachyglossus, or quick tongue. Then a decade later, a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers. Another 22 years passed, people discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to bitis, cause they bitis. That one at least made a bit of sense, <laughs> given that the original echidna from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake, but who cares at this point. Anyway, I've just barely scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there, so feel free to post more down below. That's all I've got for now. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and I'll see you in 2025. <laughs> the wow. comeback. The comeback was real. Bit us. That's, bit us. That was Because it bit us. <laughs> that was very <laughs> funny. I like that little hoedown music because he's naming oh, yeah. off all the different... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was... Uh, Pretty funny. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah. And any time that you can make, uh, you know... Hitler jokes that don't turn out to be absolutely horrific. Did that thing really go extinct because, because people, people collected I mean, that's it? what the man said. That's I wouldn't awful. be surprised. Like, it got like extinct because of its name. Yes. Like, that's terrible. If it's true. Shitty. Shitty. Like a baby's diaper. So hopefully he will make more videos and we will see Yeah, it And it won't be 2025, hopefully. Hopefully we'll... Uh, you know, yeah, uh, make some more videos. We but have only watched a few San Onella videos. A couple, videos. yeah. Um, a handful, so let us know what your favorite is down in the comments. Please do. I also enjoyed the Gorilla, Gorilla, Gorilla. gorilla that gorilla, was very gorilla. funny. It reminds me of, um, there was a cartoon on Cartoon Network, I believe, Wee back Bear in the Bear. day. No, oh. it was Bo 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 was the name one. of it. Yeah, no. That's what it reminded me of. Oh my gosh. The Dorado Dorado is a fish. Its name means gold gold, gold. gold in it's Spanish. Nice. The three legendary beetles. Yeah, that does need to be a next regional trio. I can't believe they haven't done that yet. It's insane. Pokemans, man, they missed the mark on a lot of things. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Salmonella returns and uh, with a pretty funny ass video. Yeah. Musical number, unexpected but appreciated. Mm -hmm. And the information, always top notch. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, then you should go check out Sam Onello. Yes. Give him a subscription. You should check out some of his older videos because they're all, other than this one, pretty old videos. So yeah. go check those out. <laughs> if you enjoyed our reaction to this, you could subscribe to our channel, like the video, even give us a recommendation of things you would like for us to react yeah. to in the future. Yeah, you can do that down in the comments below. You can do that on our Discord or you can do that on our Patreon. Um, we also live stream, by the way. And if you like seeing that kind of stuff, we do that every Monday and Thursday evening at 6.30 Eastern Standard mm -hmm. Time. You can even check us out when we live stream reactions like we're doing right now. Right now. Exclusively on Twitch, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. We also, on Thursdays, the last Thursday of each and every month, do a community game night yes. where you can hang out with us and play games with us and chat with us and everything. It's a good time. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see you there. But we appreciate you for watching this video. We'll see you in the next see one. See you guys. Bye.